to the moon. You are the first human beings under the age of 21 to ever travel so far. Poundland. Poundland. Poundland, yeah. Just a four-way. Cheap four-way with not even a light on it, so we don't take any power off our charger thing. We'll do the camera and uh, any batteries on it. Any other toys we like in the back. So where's yeah, where's all your power coming from? Uh oh, under the bonnet, they haven't got batteries now. You see the keys, we couldn't find the battery, so we put our uh, jump leads through a hole to the air. Uh, so Non-battery battery. So it's all basically off the battery on yeah, the uh, yeah. on the van. Yeah, but the battery's hidden underneath these days. There's yeah. a special uh, jump lead connector that we've gone off. Right. But yeah, because we go to the fuse, to the lighter socket and always blow the fuse all the time. Right. So we're trying uh, this way. What are, you pa what are you powering then, Gimpo? Uh, the camera and the, the radio's coming off the 12 volt cigarette lighter, but the camera's coming for the mains and uh, battery charger and the DVD in the back so what's coming out live with the camera in the back will have a DVD where a little 7 inch air DVD screen showing the journey for people in the back who can't see in the front and there's the telly ah oh, the a telly little, yeah the little 70 quid DVD player which has an AV in and an AV out so you plug that in and you can watch it there on your 7 inch screen cool and we get all this powered up and so Gimpo how many people might we be picking up today? Oh, God knows. Yeah, well, there's been hundreds of them going around the M25 all by themselves. But most of them just do a little bit. They're too chicken to do a full lap. But we've got a few people who could have come out and joined us for a lap. But the weather's not looking too good. Someone's got his mum's birthday tomorrow. Someone was going to go on the march for the G20, but he's thinking of going Wednesday because it might be safer. But he's going to bring his son out with a bit of base for us. And um, maybe six or eight. Depends who bottles out and who doesn't. Because people always promise and then uh, think better of it. Are we all ready? ready? Oh my god! Oh, no. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Yeah, so that was really it. Gimpo said to me, I want to do it. I said, let's do it. We didn't discuss it. We didn't talk about what it meant. And we just did it. And Bill Drummond got involved as well. Why Gimpo does the M25 spin? It seemed, I remember when he first talked to me about it, it seemed like perfect, it made perfect sense. It didn't need explaining. I was thinking, oh, of course, it, that's an obvious thing that has to be done. At the time, I don't know, I thought it was maybe just going to be a one-off. Um, obviously, Gimpo's into driving. He's into driving. That thing when you get into driving, it's actually for no reason. It's not about getting from A to B. It's just in, in you, you, one can get into the process of driving, which I know I can when I'm driving this Land Rover. Um, but that doesn't really explain why, you know, it's kind of, but it is undefinable, you know, even though I know, I wouldn't know the words to use. Well, the first one, which I think was 1997, I think, I watched quite a lot of it. Um, we were in a park up the road and we had three cinema tents and one time we had what was called the video cafe and in a corner of it they just set up with a little projector um, the first one I don't think had any sound on it um, and a fridge and a sofa and they just sat there for the three days of the festival Friday, Saturday and Sunday and watched um, eight hours of it every day and um, I'd have to say in the middle of you know an independent film festival which is what we are 
and a lot of the films, some of the films are not all that brilliant. It was actually um, incredibly um, peaceful watching the film, which was like it was like a mandala really, you know, because the camera was screwed onto the dashboard, so it was like you just saw this road going on and on forever, and they kept at more or less the same speed. It was actually really peaceful watching it, so I, I watched quite a lot of it. So, Mr. Green, um, how did you get involved with the first spin? Um, that would be around 97. So it'd be with, um, with my involvement with uh, Gimpo through a few projects that we did. So he, he came to me with um, an idea when we were in Carlisle and we were just having our lunch and he said, I want to do a drive around the M25 and I want to do it, um, you know, whenever it was, March of that year. And um, we're going to do it for 25 hours and I want you to be involved. Because we, we, around that time we'd done some other projects that involved quite a lot of driving. So we were kind of in the driving mode of doing things and doing seemingly pointless um, projects to, to just kind of amuse ourselves really. And he thought of this idea and I just thought that's, that's just, that's brilliant. So we're going to do it. And then I said, we'll film it because we can. We need to film it on videotape. They say that the uh, M25 is this, is this huge um, Colt Sigel. Right. Uh, and, and it's basically, if you keep on driving around, you, sort of, uh, you create the energy field. Right, right. And he said, oh, we're doing it again next year. Do you want to come along? So I said, fair enough. And at that point, it would seem to be recruiting any number of people basically as many as possible all these folk and there was a there was a bunch of um people who were basically all sort of said yeah sounds good and most of them turned up i have to say sort of that following year um and that was the first time i actually did the whole thing driving the full 25 hours because i thought well you got to haven't you and i just drove my own car I had a couple of well various people sort of got into the car you know, sort of interchanged. But I was, uh, you know, one of the other vehicles that was rolling along. And that was it. When we first started, about year two or three, people were getting interested. And then all these people, because we're filming the, the, the vehicle at the road in front, they're all swerving in front of us right. to get in the movie. And there were so many near crashes, it was like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> ah! And um, I try and keep it quiet now. If people want to go and drive around, they can drive around. We're welcome to that, to do it on the same date as, as near to the Equinox, Easter Equinox as possible. Not Mothering Sunday, though, the weekend after or before. And now they can see the van, they can just go around and do it themselves. It's a free road, you just help yourselves and do it. So we don't try and get a convoy going. Because uh, us, uh, you get pulled over convoys, don't you? Sure. But it's just you can go and go out and have a spin yourself. You're not allowed to race on public roads unless you're military or police. Right. So <laughs> it's why it's a spin. It's not a race, it's just a spin. And we'll see where we go at the end of it. But like, you know, when you go out for a spin, you don't know where you're going, do you? No. Until you get there. Well, that's where, yeah, where... Anyway, we've got to get ready for nearly midday and we need to get off to get onto the bridge. We have to stop top dead centre of the QE2 bridge for midday. Okay. That's the start. And it's good because it's... What is it? The clocks go forward, so we do 25 hours. We don't stop till 2 o'clock tomorrow. 2 o'clock tomorrow. It's a real tomorrow. pisser. It feels a bit longer. Right. And then it's hard cut. And we go around clockwise. The outside lane, not the inside lane. That's a shortcut. And so do you only, you only go clockwise? Yeah. Right, okay, cool. Uh, outside lane. Outside lane? Yeah, inside lane's a short way. Uh, okay, no problem. And this year, halfway. So today's, up to half 12 tonight, it's uh, year 12 and a half part one, and after half 12, it's year 12 and a half part two, because uh, a few people are spooky in the 13th year, and we think we're going to die tonight. Ah, uh, right. No, no deaths on it. So, Nobody um, wants the uh, Drummond artwork, because Drummond's done an artwork, Gimpo, Gimpo. Yep. The first one to die, on the spin gets it, and their family will. <laughs> Cunt, he did that a few years ago. So we've made sure none of us are dying. No, right? no, none of us are dying. None of us are dying. No. We'll get a bridge jumper, then you can have it. <laughs> Someone jumps in front of us, death rate's 2,000, we're up for it. Well, oh. half a tank of diesel, but hopefully I'll do two laps. Half a tank of diesel, okay, cool. Yeah, because uh, we did our Tesco's, and the machine would only take 59 pounds off my card. Because we couldn't be asked going in for some reason, yeah. There's no power coming out of We're going to be late for the start because everyone's queuing. 
He finished 25 hours after we started. <laughs> but where he finished, yeah. it doesn't matter because you still have to go that bit further. But we never go back on ourselves. I don't know if it's an achievement, but just thank God it's over and we're there. Plant the flag and go home. That's it, isn't it? When you get there, he's like, oh, right, what next? Look for something else. So is it? Look for something. I mean, I'd like to just stop the van and blow it up then and burn it or just drive it into the first bridge you come to get out and walk home wherever I live that'd be a good one That's what we don't have DJs, don't we? Gimpo, can you place when did the spin happen this year? When? Oh yeah, 18th was it? The full moon, the oval the air nearest the moon was to the earth for the last 19 years and it's elliptical or oval turn, isn't it? Yeah, it's a full moon in March the 18th or 19th. And so was that, was the kind of the full moon? The full moon just coincided with the luckily this year. It didn't, that it didn't help okay. you to persuade to have it that weekend? Because no. it shifts weekends, doesn't it, the spin? Yeah, but it's the closest to the 23rd each year. Ah, as long okay. as Mother is Sunday isn't there. Okay. And Mother is Sunday's just gone, so we're okay, so we can have it well before that. So it didn't even it didn't even coincide with the uh, clocks going forward this time, so we only did the 25 hours and not feeling like 26 hours. When sometimes it used to breach summertime, doesn't it? Yeah. But we didn't have that, so no, it was just the 18th to 19th, the closest to the 23rd, as long as it's not mothering Sunday. How long have you been wearing glasses? Listening to accounts of that from a lot of people when I was doing the last book is that moment of um, coming out of it into, into the daylight. There's a sort of woo hit when you go back into the real world from being in this specialised uh, tribal world of the ray. So I don't know if, if the fact of Gimpo exposing himself to that intensity for this 25 hour period, when he then goes back into reality, maybe it takes a whole year, you know, literally to kind of re recover the mundane realities, to come back to the ordinary daylight of East Ham and to, and to then be prepared to go back into this capsule again for another spin. The influence of Bill and Jimmy is, is, is definitely clear. That, that sort of um, heroic sort of pig-headedness, um, that uh, the quest is a thing, um, is, is definitely played a part. I mean, he was, if you think he was a, you know, he was a squaddy and he, he leaves the army and becomes a, a, um, a band manager or a roadie or something like that, that life should have gone quite smoothly. But the fact that he was ending up with, you know, Bill Drummond and, and Jimmy Courtney has probably twisted his life Quite, quite a strange direction. It should have been far simpler for him and, uh, and uh, you know, the world of art and um, outsider art and things like that. And then, uh, and then this year that's just gone, I was actually available for the first time in, you know, 12 or 13 years. So it's been this odyssey of trying to get the, the planets to align so I'm available. And uh, so, yeah, I, fi I finally made it this year. It's been like 13 years of trying. And, you know, the umpteen years before that, trying to just find out who to get in touch with and how to get involved. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me on for a while. It's been very long. It's been a very long 40 minutes. Fruit plaster. Ginger wine. Cheers, guys. Nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. Hope you see you next year. Nice to meet you. And you. Have a safe drive home. Let's enjoy the rest of your trip. We're off to Earl's Court. <laughs> I can't imagine the established art world ever really going for it, but I mean, it's, to my mind, it's definitely art, but it's outsider art. You know, it's, it's being made for the sake of making it with no commercial understanding of what the industry wants or anything like that. It's just, it's just a genuine thing sort of coming out of him. And um, it's good as well, it's good art, but as I say, it's, it's outsider art.
Oh. It's a piece of art, isn't it? The M25 spin. Well, yeah, it must be. Of course, it must be. Of course, it is. People ask about it, and people bring that into it, and say, "Yeah, it is." Of course, it's, it's become art. It's it become... didn't. It didn't. How did it start? Um, because I, because uh, I was driving with Bill, doing a lot of driving with Bill, as I did, and I just said to him one time, "I want to drive around this for a day, because it's just a big, like a big raceway or whatever. It just goes round. And it's pointless." And just because it's the M25, it had to be 25 hours, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's one more than Le Mans and all sorts of places like that. Like one louder. Well, Gimpo to me is a, is a wholly mythical character because I came across him through the writing of Bill Drummond. I'm never quite sure with Bill how far reality impinges into the story. And he creates something, a figure who's kind of attached to him, but more monstrous in a way, more, more extreme. He's a kind of Hunter S. Thompson. Um, extension of Bill's own madness and vision and so you have this character Gimpo. The name is perfect and, and what do we know about him? We, we're told he's some kind of ex-squaddy, he's dangerous, he lets off flares and weapons now and again and he's Bill's backup. So I'm, I'm deeply fascinated by him as a character but I don't know anything about him and I don't know if he's true or not and then when I walked with Bill up to the M25 from the Millennium Dome. During the course of that day, little stories emerged about Gimpo and it became obvious that he really is somebody and he was out there for the burning of the million quid and maybe the fact that he had to film the burning of the million quid set him off into a trajectory whereby he had to undertake even more extreme actions himself to keep within that mindset. a long way but now it doesn't look so far right you know once you get past halfway it doesn't look that far at all it's like oh, bloody hell, before night i need to be over and then what we're going to do I'm starting to worry about it already i have to take a painting <laughs> dave green and bill drummond came on the first spin and um and it was just the three of you yeah just the three of us we had a couple of friends with cameras to try and capture it and everything but they got lost at times because they were, going to, they were filming us going around in the, the vehicle. All we had was a VHS camera in the, in the van, it was a machine in the back. We can get six tapes, three hours on each tape or something, I think it was. And we were doing, I was being very strict about it. We were just doing four hours, two laps, stopping at Clackett and only stopping in the petrol station and going straight off again, filling with petrol and straight off, bang, bang, bang. Because I had something in my head like, right, we've got to do, you know, we're going around and whatever. And because it's a spin and these days, I've eased off a bit on it. I don't want. Uh, anybody to get hurt or anything, just no, go out for no. a Sunday afternoon spin. Yeah. And so um, we do stop there uh, and go into the services and have a nice rest in the evening sometime for, you know, an hour and a half or whatever, and cups of tea to wake us up in the early hours. But yeah, on the initial spin, it was just Dave Green and Bill Drummond. And there we did 11 and three quarter laps, 1,286 miles. So that's the one I can remember, because that was my first one. And uh, we had a plaque for that, but I bashed it into the ground on a stake. And then as I was bashing it, I missed the stake and hit the plaque and the plaque fell off. But we've been back looking for it and it's not there anywhere. But it's between the M11 and the uh, A12, somewhere down the north, on the north side of the motorway. I suppose there's a sort of I don't know, um, unpredictability to it. You know, certainly in the early days, um, you, you, know, you didn't know how outside environs would react to the fact that we were driving around the M25 for 25 hours. But then if you think about it, you know, there isn't a law against it, so, you know, sort of, what's the issue? Um, but I think that sort of people just assume, certainly, certainly people who came on the spin, 
there is this sort of oh, know, assumption that there's uh, the, the, the oh, crikey, what's going to happen? But really, you know, it's just yeah, same thing really. But but, but um, same thing in terms of never the same as ever ever previously existed. So you know, they they are each spin is uniquely different, and they're the same because they're all uniquely different. <laughs> Some years you're not working and you feel it, you're a bit skint in your pocket, that's all it is. Yeah. But that doesn't matter, does it? No, well, that's the, I don't think so, Gimco. I think um, I think it's very important. I think you know, if you if you stopped, Gimpo, mm. you know, it would be such a shame. The world would stop, it'd be over, that'd be it. You know, you've got to keep going to keep everything going. Yeah, well, you've got, and also, it's just, there's just that thing, isn't there, of like, you've come up with an idea. Mm. You've got to see it through, haven't you? Oh yeah, that's it. Just keep going and going. There's no uh, worries about it. Tim's not going to let me stop, and uh, I don't want to stop. You know, it's got to come this far, more than halfway. Definitely, it's all downhill. As we said, you know, before it's now. It's you know, it just seems to be getting easier. It's getting easier, is it? Yeah. <laughs> the, the 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 spin was easier, but the recovery this year was worse because there was more people smoking in the van. And because of the damp, I felt like I got a bit of a cold. So I was suffering till the Thursday, Friday this year after it. Lovely. What was missing, Tim? Twin splitter. So we can uh, uh, run another sound lead out into another piece of equipment. We need to get going now. Don't we, we do. So Tim, it was it was midday top dead centre, wasn't it? It was midday top dead centre, wasn't it? Which spin was this? <laughs> don't fucking ask me. Uh, it was this year's spin, but I don't know what, 15, 14, 14? 14. Don't know, 12. No, it's gone 12 and 13. We passed halfway last year, because we thought the year before was halfway, but it wasn't. So it was last year was halfway. That was 12 to 13, so this would be 14. So there'd be 11 years left, is it? But someone was saying nine earlier. We ain't got a clue. Tim's a man to ask, because he looks in Someone's books and gets the date, 94 was it, or something? Or was that date for something else? At our age, it all was... This is an easy question, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. How many laps did you do this? Oh, <laughs> quite a few because um, Tim got charged because the, the van hire company doubled the price of the mileage and didn't, Tim didn't check it and we get 500 free miles we hired for two days and he went over 500 miles but we probably did about seven to maybe eight laps I think because we didn't go that slow because there was no one to pick up or anything we had Mark with us all the way so I'll get the mileage off Tim at another date and we'll take that away and know the mileage and work backwards like that. But I'm saying I'd, I'd go seven, six or seven. A 
as you see, they have just left the hangar deck at the room and have cleared the airlock into the colony. <laughs>